Hi everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove and thanks for joining me today on my channel. I wanted to share with you how I use my pressed flowers. So I have done a tutorial on how I press my flowers and how I store my flowers in these little plastic bags once they're very dry. And then I also did a video tutorial on how to build a little booklet to store the baggies in um, a little folder like this so they're accessible whenever you need them. So today I thought it'd be fun to share with you how I actually use them in my journals. Uh, I have this technique that I do uh, without having to laminate. So this is a great project for those who don't have a laminator. Um, this is a, a fun way to use up those pressed flowers, which uh, I'm a little bit obsessed with these days. I just love the, the natural look. Here's some uh, little uh, little tag here that you know makes a great gift tag or a little journal card. Uh, so this is using varnish, which is the technique we're going to use today. And you can see the varnish, it, it hardens the flower enough that it's still pliable and the flower doesn't break without having to put um, a tissue paper coating on the top. So it does have a shiny finish to it. So you're either going to like that or not like that. Um, and then there is the option where you put a... Uh, um, what's it called, like a tissue paper on cheap. So I just use the toilet paper and you just brush that on top and it gives you a very matte finish. Now this finish is, is very rust, rough looking and rustic looking. So it, it has its own little appeal, which is nice as well. So it's nice to use both techniques. So I'm gonna show you the varnish technique today. And if I have time, I'll show you the varnish and toilet paper technique as well. All right, so. I will, uh, we're gonna work in this uh, little booklet today. So I'm starting a, a new uh, signature. I'm gonna back this camera up a bit. A uh, new signature today um, for a botanical journal. Uh, so I've done some sketching and stuff and I think this might be the next um, quickie sketch that we do will be hydrangeas. And uh, today I thought we would decorate this little booklet and maybe this page. I have this little insert that I made, so it's just a folder of uh, one of those uh, file folders. Uh, folded it in half and then just added some coffee dyed scraps, whatever I had, and then just tied it with some elastic ribbon. And then I made a um, little tuck bucket here, a uh, belly band, I believe they're called. And I just sewed that in so that this has a little place to sit and then it just slides in. So I thought it'd be kind of nice to decorate this today. So here's some more examples of how to use your pressed flowers. So here's some, this is a, uh, what's that called? A geranium from uh, this year's garden. Another geranium with a little journal tag. And I also did a tutorial on how to, how to make these with the laminated pressed flowers and how to wrap uh, the uh, paper. So I'll, I'll try and remember to put all those uh, links into the other videos so you can give them a try if you're interested. And then I just did a pocket here, a couple pockets with some sewing, which isn't my favorite thing to do. As you can see, <laughs> none of my sewing is straight. I'm a very impatient sewer, but that's okay. It all adds to the charm. So I think we'll decorate that today. And this is just, like I said, uh, we've got this page to do still, just a little way of using up all these pressed flowers that I've done. And I just love the look of them. So there we go, here's some lavender. All right, so we're gonna pull this guy out for now. And I also wanted to show you, I haven't looked yet, I've been dying to peek. Uh, so this is the latest flower press that I did, which was a couple of weeks ago. I cut some flowers out of my garden and I'm dying to see what they look like. Ooh, I hope they worked out. So uh, I have a tutorial, like I said, on how I press my flowers. So here's some hydrangeas and they've dried quite nicely. So you need to make sure they are completely dry. And the best way to test that is really just to snap a couple of pieces and see, see if, uh, they uh if they bend they're not dry and you do need them completely dry i'm not even sure what this is called it was growing in the ditch and it's so pretty that's my problem and that's why i kind of want to started start more botanical journals because i really need to start learning the names of these flowers and here's some clover because i have more clover in my grass than i do 
grass. So these didn't keep their color as much as I had hoped. They still have some nice leaves. So it's kind of fun. You never know what you're gonna get. Flip that over real quick. So sometimes it's successful. Sometimes you can be a little disappointed and then sometimes you can be super, super surprised. So here's some vetch that I did, which is that really bright purple flower that kind of grows in the field. It's really pretty. Um, so it turns more of a blue than a uh, than its uh, purp its original purple. Let's see what's next. I can't even remember what I put in here. That's another thing that gets exciting. So here is what's this? Oh, I think this is Queen Anne's Queen Anne's lace. So it grows wild everywhere here, and it's this burst. It looks big like this, and it's just so pretty. I mean, how pretty is that? Do I have a darker? Like how pretty is that gonna be pressed in a pressed in a book? Oh my gosh, so cute. I love it. So here's a little one. We could possibly use that today. I'll leave that guy out. And I like these, uh, I like this too. So that's some really pretty textures in there and some uh, backing that could add some interest to uh, to a journal. All right, next page. And you can always fast forward the video to, uh, you know, the, the actual process of putting all these in use. So uh, here's a little lavender. That's that plant again. I'm not sure the name of it. It pressed quite nicely, but I think I picked it a little too late where the, where the purple has already started like to go to seed or something because it doesn't have that purple all the way up like I would like, but this still, this is quite a pretty piece right here. I like that one. Maybe we'll leave that out. <laughs> and some flowers are more successful than others as well. So this little daisy here, these little wild daisies we get, sometimes they dry really nicely and other times they just completely fall apart. So it's a hit and miss, but it's part of the fun. So here's some hydrangeas. So I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna leave this page out actually. I'll add this to this page because I definitely wanna use some hydrangeas. And I think that might be it. Oh, no, one more. What else did we, what else did we press? Oh, these turned out quite pretty. I don't think these are fully dry though. So you see how they're still flexible? So some flowers are more moist naturally than others, so they take longer to dry. These must be a petunia, is what I'm guessing. And uh, so you can see they're still they're they're still pliable. Now they feel dry to the touch, but they're still I don't have my tweezers. They're still flexible to me, so I would give that longer. See how they flex. So I I would let that press longer just to avoid any mold. Look how pretty these ones are. So these feel quite dry, but that's really pretty. That's gonna look really nice on a gift tag. And you can do so much with pressed flowers. You can glue them to glass. You can put them in a picture frame. That's probably why I might be a little obsessed is I, uh, I'm constantly looking for ways to use them up. So I'm just gonna put this back real quick so I don't lose them. Put this guy back. And uh, up here and I did a little bit more on um, my other press as well the other one I showed you how I a real small one okay play with that after and let's see what's in this one put them in frame here so I did a little bit of pressing in this one too this is off uh, oh Coral Bell, I think it's called, and this is the, the little tiny flower that shoots up. Here's some lavender. So this is really pretty and delicate. How fun would that be? Maybe I'll leave that guy out. <laughs> this might be a really long video. Yeah, see, there's the Coral Bell leaves. Um, mine were dark, rich, burgundy color, so they've dried a, a kind of green color, which is quite pretty. not to lose them. This is a new flower I bought this year, a new perennial, and I'm not sure what it's called. 
but it has these really pretty puffy little purple flowers. They pressed okay, maybe not the best. There's another one. Uh, I think this is their leaves, which are really pretty. Now these are still flexible, so they're not quite dry yet. So I'm gonna leave those. And then I'm making a mess here. We'll go back to this side, because this is a little accordion book. Here's some, uh, not sure what these are, but they're quite pretty. Can't remember what they're called. They're not quite dry yet either. Here's some more little hydrangea specimens. This I think is called a butterfly bush. It pressed quite nicely, but it's a bit too thick for my liking. So I find when plants are too thick, they don't, they don't um, look nice in a project. They're just too bulky. Uh, more buttercups, I think. Different leaves. These are just weeds that I pull. But sometimes, you know, even though they're considered weeds, they're quite pretty. These are these little wild bluebells I found in my garden. They, they're they really pretty. They are a big shrub that turned up in my garden. I guess a bird had dropped a seed or something. They're really pretty and they, they press quite nicely as well, but they're a little bit thick. So I'm not sure, probably have to use tissue paper on those in order to preserve them. So that's that guy. So we've got some to work with. I'm just gonna move, get up and move this out of our way. And hopefully I don't lose all the bolts. Just one. All right. So we have some nice specimens to work with. I'm gonna find my tweezers here. Tweezers are a must have tool when it comes to pressed flowers. They will save you a lot of aggravation. <laughs> so let's try this. Um, let's try this varnish technique I wanna show you. We'll do it on a uh, we'll do it on a tag first. We'll do it on the scrap here. Get this out of the way, just to see how these uh, are done, and then we'll do our little booklet. So this varnish that I use, the way I discovered the varnish and how it works is because I um, I ran out of glue. Uh, just you can use PV glue whatever it's called you can use Mod Podge um, but I didn't have any left and I had this uh, fusion mineral paint clear top coat which is basically a hard varnish and I thought well it's a preservative I mean it, it protects furniture so I thought maybe it will sit over these flowers and be strong enough and durable enough to protect them and it worked so I really really like them I really like it, and you can use any varnish, a non-yellowing type varnish. Um, I wouldn't recommend a spray, it's not thick enough. You need something that you can paint. Um, so that's a suggestion there, and that's what we're gonna use today. And I just have my cheapy dollar store brush. And uh, I like to add like a little bit of uh, texture to my, my um, papers. So I have this old stamp and I've used this in other videos and I love this stamp. It's just like a, a word stamp, illegible cursive writing. And I like to break up the flatness of the page by using that. And it really shows up nice on white. You can see it on the white much better, which we're gonna play with. And then I like to throw on my varnish. So I just pour a little on. And what I like to do is cover the whole thing so that the the whole page, I'm gonna put this back underneath, is got the same texture on it. So if it dries shiny with brush strokes, it's gonna be shiny with brush strokes everywhere, not just where you're gonna adhere the flowers. So this is just a test run. Normally I would, I would play with the layout of my flowers first before I put the varnish in, but I, I wanna just have fun with it and give it a go. So I'm gonna put them straight on here on top of the wet varnish. I'll stick them down. Maybe uh, we'll try this guy too. Now let's just stick to these. So you wanna work relatively fast while the varnish is still wet. And then you're gonna throw some more varnish on top. And you're gonna notice your paper most likely will bow 
because it's going to curl naturally because it's getting wet. And then you just have to straighten that out after with some weights once the varnish is fully dry. So you can see I added extra varnish there. It's thicker and that's, uh, that's going to protect the stem. So I'm just going to put that aside to dry while we move to the next one. So let's try this little book. So uh, I'm thinking something like this and then maybe something bright behind it just so it stands off the page a bit. Yeah, that works. Let's do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I like things kind of grungy and vintagey looking. So I'm gonna rub the edges of my torn paper. This is just a, a torn piece of random scrap that I have. I always have scraps kicking around. I'm sure we all do. Just, we make scraps from our scraps. <laughs> it never ends with scraps. So I'm gonna, again, just rub the ink on here and I'm just gonna put it on random. I think this is even upside down, so. You can't read it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It's, it's more of a textural element than anything else, which I really like. All right, so I think we'll go this way. So we'll put that aside for a second and let's play with some layout here. I really like these hydrangeas and since I've introduced hydrangeas into the, the my book with the sketching, I think I will keep using them. So you just get to play where you want things to sit, how much you want on there. Like that's just pretty right on its own. You know, you can add a word down here. I think I would like to incorporate a hydrangea though. Come on. Oops. <laughs> they are delicate. Maybe one or two. I just want to play with my layout first. So I have an idea of where I'm going to put things after. Do I like that? No. I like this guy too. I want to use him. Let's maybe move this aside. I think I'll shorten the stem on this guy. I'm starting to think it's just too much. I really just like this. I think we'll use the hydrangea somewhere else. Let's see. So I like the idea of adding a word down here. I think that's okay or a little too boring. I don't know. Maybe uh, this guy. Looks like that's kind of pretty. That's kind of pretty too, isn't it? Maybe we'll do that. That way we can use these hydrangeas up, which I want to, I really want to use them. All right, let's do that. So we'll move this aside, kind of try and remember what it looked like. <laughs> Throw your varnish down. That might be a little too much. So I'm gonna take some of my trusty toilet paper. Absorb some up, it's a bit too much. All right, so I'll take this guy it across, push it in, take our hydrangeas, and drop those in, and our little guy here to fill a hole at the bottom, and then we will dab again. I'm going to use some of this up here that I have, and you really just want to coat over and underneath all the leaves. So if they're really thick, like this branch here, you wanna almost saturate it with extra, just so it's fully submerged in the varnish. And I think we'll let that dry for a minute while I show you the toilet paper one. So these I would, I would normally let dry like overnight 
uh, just to make sure they're fully cured. But for the video, I'll show you, hopefully they'll be dry enough to, to glue it down to the next piece. Uh, let's do something like this. So again, I like to vintage it up a bit. You can use any anything you like to do that. Going to find my little brush. I finally got one of these guys. It's taken forever, but I finally decided to buy one. And I'm just gonna rub the edges and make them a little bit dirty. Not too much ink because I don't want the varnish to smear the ink. And just want something very simple. So that's kind of pretty, or maybe we will use this guy this time. I like that, let's do that. Hopefully I'm in frame, geez. I've made a video for a little while now, I'm out of practice. All right, hope you guys are having fun creating your own little projects and being inspired by other journalists and journal makers and artists, finding new ideas and new projects. I hope this gives you some ideas and some fun project here to try. So let's do the toilet paper. So like I said, just cheap old toilet paper. Um, I take the one ply off. I don't know how many plies this is. I think it's just a two ply. This even has like texture in it, but I don't care. So you can see the brightness right now without the toilet paper, without the the paper over top and you could leave it like this but if you want the duller um, more matte finish you're going to want to put the toilet paper right over top and then be as delicate as you can and start pulling it out so the more you brush it the more likely you will tear the toilet paper so you want to be patient which i am terrible at but you want to do your best to be patient and just slowly push the toilet paper away from the center and just dab it down. And now it gives you that very rustic, rough finish, which is also very pretty. I just usually find I tear the toilet paper because I'm too impatient. So one will be very shiny, like very glossy. Even though this is matte, it still will be shiny and then one will give you a very uh, rustic, dull finish. So it really depends on the look you're after. So I'm gonna let those dry for a second. We'll see where we are with our first one. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. So you can see it's just about dry. It's a little sticky still. So I think we'll have to leave that. So what we can do is play a little bit more while we're waiting for these to dry. So let's have a look see. So I have this other page, like I mentioned, this backside page. And I have this um, tissue paper. Where did I put it? Here it is. It came in a gift bag. And I just thought it was so pretty, this tissue paper. So I thought maybe we could varnish that see what we think and hopefully we like it because it's going straight in the journal but you know if you don't you just cover it up with other things that is the beauty of trying new things and having fun with it so I'm just going to clean the edge here with my scissors and I'm going to give myself a rough guess how big this page is because you know me I do nothing straight so it's a little bigger than the page, so it gives me a little room for error. And let's give that a try. See if we like it. Just gonna flip this over because this has wet glue on it. Wet varnish, I mean, and I don't want it on here. Maybe I'll take these guys out for now. So it lays a little flat. All right, let's give it a go. So we'll throw it down, throw some varnish down. Paint my page. And just uh, hope for the best. <laughs> Which is what I do a lot with my journaling. And like I said, this dries very quick, so you wanna move quick. 
if you're uh, like to take your time and you're, you find you work slowly, I would stick to white glue and Mod Podge because you'll probably have much more time to play with it than you will with a varnish like this. So I'm just gonna put this on here. Hopefully these guys are drying for us. So I'm gonna make you watch for hours. Just wanna give you some ideas. go. So that's all glued down. Pretty easy and I think we'll vintage it up with the stamp after. Right now we'll just cut this excess off. I'll flip it over and have a look, see where I am. And I didn't glue the tab, so I'm going to cut back here. I'll, I'll clean that up after when it's dry. I don't want to take the chance of ripping it off right now while it's wet. All right. That looks cute. Something different. And we can always add stuff to it. So, for example, Where's my tweezers? You can always glue flowers to it as well. Something that maybe show up bright. Like a, uh, have a look here. What do we got? What do we got? Something yellow. Some lavender. Big fern. Should try fern. I haven't used a fern yet. Bit too big, I think. Where is my tweezers? <laughs> I'd lose, oh, they're in my hand, see? I'd lose my hand if it wasn't attached. I'll put that in after. Maybe just a simple little flower. Like these uh, really, really pretty, simple, elegant, Buttercups, mine, mine frame, sorry guys. Here we go, something like that. We'll get that glued down while it's wet. Maybe this guy too, I like this one. I haven't used him yet. He gets a little lost. There we go, I'll just throw this down. Let that dry. See how our other ones are doing. So we're gonna put that aside and let that dry for a minute. And this guy's still a bit wet. This guy is, he's damp, but he's dry enough to proceed. So let's do that. So I'm gonna glue him to here. And then I thought we'd put cute little brads in. Need my trusty glue. Throw it on the back. So it's a bit tacky still, so it still is wet. You have to be a little delicate with it at this stage. So as not to damage it. And just throw it on there. And then I think, well, I got these little old brads the other day. Where did I put them? Of course, the ones I need have disappeared. Oh, they're right in front of me. I got them for like two bucks. <laughs> Perfect. They're on sale for two bucks. Can't beat that. And they're these like little pearl hearts, which I thought were quite cute. So we'll put some of these in here. Punch a hole in the cover. Flip your gator over so you can actually see what you're doing. And again, I'm not worried about it being perfect. I just like to line it up, throw some holes in. It's handmade. And I like it when the pressure is not there to be perfect myself. And you just fold them over and open them up. Cute little, another little textural element, kind of like a little French country, I guess, or something. All right. 
So uh, I hope you guys like today. Uh, I, I, can, I always forget to uh, mention my Instagram page. So if you'd like to follow me along on Instagram, it's uh, the underscore creative underscore cove. Um, I'm going to try and put that link up on there too. And uh, you can always send me messages through there as well. Leave me comments on uh, on the, on the um, uh, YouTube channel here of what you might like to see or what else we can do together. How much fun uh, we have building these things together. I certainly enjoy the process. And I hope it inspires you to uh, give it a go. Like, have some fun with it. Try it. Don't don't stress yourself out about being perfect. Just have some fun with with the journaling and experimenting with different things. I mean, how pretty would that be for Christmas for a gift tag? Just something completely handmade. I mean, if somebody gave me that, I'd probably hang it on my tree. I think it's so pretty. So uh, just some ideas on how to use your pressed flowers. So here is the other one. It's not quite dry, but uh, all I would do is trim off or pull off, you can tear it off as well. You can sand these edges when they're dry. I like them rough myself. I'm just gonna fold this over because this is still a bit damp when <laughs> it's sticking to everything. And uh, then you just take a piece of ribbon or this is all from the dollar store. You can accent the bottom. I'm gonna put uh, a bit on the top here. And I like to just staple my stuff, punch the hole back through. I like to staple, but you can tie them. I like to staple mine so that they lay flatter in the journal, but you can also just tie a bow, a knot, I should say. You can add something to the bottom just to country it up even more, which looks really cute. So let's do that. This video just keeps going and going. So I'll put a little at the bottom. Usually I'd let these things dry better, but for the sake of videos. And this will get more rigid. Once the varnish dries, this will go hard again. Right now it's still quite soft because it's still wet. And let's see, this guy's almost dry, but I think he's dry enough just to add some, just to show you can go over top of the varnish. You would have to let it dry completely so it doesn't smudge. But you can add those textural elements right back in over top of our tissue paper. Even though it's still a little damp, you just got to make sure you let it dry completely before you put it away. So that's another little page, something completely different, which I really like. So that is today little video on how to use your pressed flowers in two ways. One with, and well, using varnish, but using um, varnish with tissue paper and using varnish without tissue paper. And you can see the difference. Again, not fully dry, but you can see that there's a matte finish and there's a shiny finish. So uh, it's up to you and your preference. So I hope you give it a try. If you like uh, this video and my channel, please subscribe and hit that like button. It really helps my channel. And uh, please feel free to leave comments and feedback on the video and what else you might like to see. I hope you have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.